All right, folks. Good day, good people. This is the next tutorial we are going to make, part five of our SQL course. I hope you watched the other videos before. If not, please do so and get the basics and also the Oracle Live SQL platform that we are dealing with here. Today, arithmetic expressions and aliases. Aliases, aliases, I'm not sure, you choose. Let's dive right into it. We start with arithmetic expressions. Now, first, what is that? And then what do we do with it? You can select rows from your database, of course, okay? And you can modify this with plus, minus, and all the basic four things that you know from math, right? From like fifth grade, okay? So plus, minus, the multiplier, and the divider. And I say we go to our live SQL here. So if you did not already sign up for this, then please do so now because we need it. It's in the part four, so in the last video that I made. I prepared some statements for you to complete here. I commented it out with two minuses. So I don't have to type here everything and you can immediately see, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one, uh, what we are dealing with here. So we don't start from the top, we start here. And the arithmetic expression is basically what you put here in your select statement. So you do your basic select, like salary from employees, and let's just execute this and see what happens. Now what happens is you get two rows. The first row is salary and the second row is salary minus 10. And what this gives you is, well, the salary, which in this case is, and I'm sorry, I had to zoom in because otherwise the font will be too small. The salary here is 24,000 and the salary minus 10 is 23,990. So what you can do is from uh, rows that contain numbers, integers, you can add numbers, you can subtract numbers, you can just do that, okay? If ever you try to do this with a column that does not contain a number, maybe it contains a character like name, it will not work. It will tell you this is not possible, um, but don't believe me verify we say last name minus 10 and this throws us an error and says invalid number because steve minus 10 or john minus 10 is not a valid number all right moving on let's comment this out so this is minus of course the same goes with um plus and as I can show you here, uh, the same thing goes for um, adding numbers, for dividing, for multiplying. So what you get is 24,000, salary divided by two is 12,000, and the salary multiplied by two is 48,000. Pretty easy, right? And it does that for all of the columns. I'm sorry, I can't make this smaller here, I can only make it collapse. Yeah, okay, why not? So salary, salary divided by two and salary times two. Okay, now what I would like to show you is you can also do this for dates, but there's an important thing to remember. So let's do it with the higher date. Remember, there's a higher date for each employee that works in our enterprise. So we select the higher date, we select the higher date plus 10. Now you should guess first what this gives us. Higher date plus 10 and higher date minus two. What do you think this gives us? If you said it will add days to the date, then you are correct. Let's execute this and see what it gives us. The higher date is June 17, and higher date plus 10 is June 27. 
and the higher date minus 2 is June 15. So this works. You can just add and subtract days to the date that you are choosing. So if the type of the column is a date, you can just add several days. Now what will not work, of course, is something like this. Higher date divided by 10. Because what, what would that be? What, be? what would be a date divided by 10? You might think maybe like the January 10 divided by 10 is January 1st or something, but that's not how it works. You cannot do this. It says expected a number, got a date. So like the divider and the multiplier both expect a number. This is not working, okay? Very well. Now, what was the problem with the last things? The problem was that the columns are just named higher date plus 10, higher date minus 2. How can we change that? You can change that with an alias. Let's go back to our presentation. All right. This is also important that null is not zero because there might be columns or rows in your select statement that say null. When they say null, you cannot do any arithmetic expressions on them. Okay? So when the salary is zero, then you can add 10. If the salary is null, this means that nobody put anything in this field and thus you cannot work with it. So if you say salary, excuse me, salary minus 10, and let's say for instance the first person does not have a salary, so nobody put anything in there, then it will be null here too. Now we don't have any examples here because all the rows are filled out. Just remember that you cannot do arithmetic expressions on null values. On zero, yes, when somebody explicitly put a zero, this works, but when they didn't put anything in this field, this will still become null, whatever you do. Important to remember this. Still what we see here, now we want to rename these. Let's go back to our presentation and put an alias in there. And an alias is a custom name for a column that will be shown. And it names a column as you wish. So this doesn't affect the database at all. This is important. It's just for your output. Let's see this here in our nice live SQL and execute the first thing we did here. Now I will erase this for a moment. Let's say select higher date from employees. Okay, gives you the higher date, no problem. If you want to rename this, there are two ways to do this. You can either just put a word here like Ah, no, this is a keyword. Import, you cannot choose keywords when you do it like this. So, um, uh, what do we put here? Like, can be anything. Like, uh, hire me. Why not? And now, this column will be called hire me. So, hire date became hire me. This is the shortcut. Problem with this is it will always be in uppercase like before and you cannot really leave any special characters in here unless they are attached in the word. So what you want to do or what I always do is you put S, double columns and then you put your word in here. Oh, shit, okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> And uh, what happens now is that it's case sensitive. You see, now you got the small characters, uh, the lowercase characters in lowercase and the upper characters in uppercase. What still happens though is when you do it like this, you see the highlight here, you still get um, it marked as a keyword, but when it is with in your double columns, it will still execute. It's a little distracting, I think, because you might think that this won't work, but it does actually. 
Now, if you do, oh, sorry, if you do this without the double columns, it will throw a problem because the from keyword was found, well, it was not found where expected because here is a date function now. All right, so if you want to use aliases case sensitively, or if you use keywords in your aliases, you always have to put the double columns. And well, you can beautify your output like this. Let's do it for the other columns that we did before. For example, this one, because there we had some very ugly um, cases here. You can chain them. You can say high rate plus 10 as uh, later, for example, and higher date minus 10 as earlier. All right, you can just chain them. Just put it behind the selector and you're fine. Execute and now you have the higher date and you have later and you have earlier. Okay, nice folks. That was basically it. There was the, that these were the arithmetic expressions and the aliases for the columns. I hope you learned something today. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and I see you in the next tutorial.